Now it's time for RTB 101. This is the segment where we talk about practical questions to help equip you to share your faith with your friends and family more effectively. And it is so exciting today to have my friend and visiting scholar, Dr. Sue Dykes with us. Welcome, Sue. Thank you very much. I'm All the way from South Africa. Yeah, I'm very glad to be here. Yeah, well, we're very glad to have you here. And uh, Sue, you are an expert in what is called paleoanthropology. Why don't you just quickly tell us what that big word is? Okay, well, paleontology is actually the study of fossils um, or uh, anything before archaeology, really. Um, but paleoanthropology is the study of human fossils or the fossils leading um, up to modern humankind. Very good. So your particular area of expertise is what we call the hominid fossil record. And these were the species of creatures who existed prior to modern humans or That's homo right. sapiens sapiens. Uh, we call them biblically Adam and Eve. So before Adam and Eve were these hominid species. And I'm just wondering from a Christian perspective, you know, growing up in the church, I was always kind of very leery about believing that even hominids were a thing, things like Neanderthals or Homo habilis. Aren't those all just fakes and frauds? So kind of help us think about that a little bit. Yeah, I think that's a, a, a possible misperception or misconception in you know people's view, um, partly due to the fact that there was actually a fraud uh, perpetrated in from about 1908, um, where uh, a man called Charles Dawson, who was a, a bit of a, a paleoanthropologist himself in those days, um, so-called discovered uh, a, a, a what was lo looked like a missing link between man and ape. It was shortly after Darwin's Descent of Man had been published, and everybody was on the search for this missing link. Um, and that wasn't discovered for about 40 years after he presented it to the Academy in England. So after Darwin came this big announcement yes. that now the missing link we had been found. found. The missing link, okay. And it turned out to be a fraud. Um, but uh, that's the only real fraud that we can talk about. There has been another case where Nebraska man, for instance, where a tooth was uh, misidentified. But that wasn't a deliberate fraud, as far as I know. Um, all the other hominin species that we have discovered, um, dating back to six, seven million years even, um, are bona fide fossils. Um, and they are uh, sort of so distinct morphologically or in their, in their shapes that uh, they're clearly different species. And those species, you know, progress up up through the ages until just before modern man. So you feel like there, yes, there was one very large fake, very public, fake. very public fake, and then there was one very public misidentification yeah. of a species. But th those are just kind of two exceptions. We need to look at the whole record, and we have a lot of evidence that these hominids actually existed yeah. and that they are verifiable, that that's a, a record that we can trust. Yes, it is. And, you know, very often there's a, a question of how do we interpret them? And there's usually a bit of back and forth between researchers as to how these fossils might be interpreted. Um, a, a recent one um, in question would be w what we call the hobbit, uh, Homo floresiensis. Um, and for a while, there was some suspicion that it might have been a sick human being or somebody with microcephaly um, because it's quite a recent specimen and it doesn't seem to fit into the pattern you'd expect of larger and larger brains. This one has a very small brain and it's very recent. Okay. So when we think about the hominids from a Christian point of view, Christians shouldn't uh, fear that fossil record when we talk to our non-Christian friends we shouldn't try to defend the position that they're all fakes and frauds. We no. should say that, yes, there is validity there. And when we're talking to our, our non-Christian friends, we can assure them that we affirm the scientific record. I think that's, that's the main uh, point uh, to take away, because um, it's not in a Christian's interest to be um, seen to be just 
uh, suspicious of science, almost for the sake of being suspicious of science. And it's also not in our interest as Christians when we engage a scientist to be um, suspicious of, of, their, of their work. Um, and there's no reason to be. It's, it's all very valid. Very good. Well, thank you for sharing with us. That really helps me just understand that better. And hopefully I'll help you as you are talking to your non-Christian friends. And I want to encourage you to check out the Reasons to Believe YouTube channel for more videos from Dr. Sue Dykes and the whole conversation about science and the Christian faith as it relates to the hominid fossil record.